Hey boaters, it's Jim from Ray Marine. It's Thursday night and this is Ray Marine Live. Thank you for coming out to join us tonight. We have, uh, I think, a great show for you. I've got a lot of pre-questions um, in anticipation of this broadcast and thank you for sending those in. We do love your comments and questions and feedback. So just uh, before we get started, let me remind everybody, um, if you have questions along the way, you can chat them in through Facebook or YouTube. If you're one of the many people who watches this uh, after the live show is over, uh, feel free to drop your comments and questions in below because I do log back in and I try to answer all the questions that get posted. So tonight we're going to be talking about engine integration with uh, Ray Marine products, uh, specifically with Axiom, but actually a lot of the things we're talking about work as well on our older Lighthouse 2 products and even going all the way back to some of our classic A-series, C-series, E-series products. Um, they were capable of displaying engine data as well. So a lot of the things you're going to see tonight will work on those products too. Before we get into engine integration, just a little bit of recent news. Uh, so earlier, uh, I guess it was actually last week, we rolled out Lighthouse 3.16. It is named Havar, spelled H-V-A-R. <clears throat> Havar is a resort island in Croatia. Uh, we've been naming the Lighthouse releases after different boating destinations around the world. And a lot of boaters over there in the Mediterranean and uh, in other points uh, head up to Havar. Uh, it's really a beautiful area. Definitely check it out uh, if you've never seen it before. <clears throat> so that's the namesake of this Lighthouse release. Um, some of the highlights that are in it, um, of course, it has support for our new Cyclone radar that we talked about in our last episode. Um, it supports Cyclops Marine load cells. Um, if you are a sailing member of our audience, you may be familiar with Cyclops Marine. Um, their load cell technology can be attached to your boat's uh, standing and running rigging, and it gives you live updates of the forces on the boat's rigging. Um, you can display it through the data system on Axiom, so that's pretty cool. Um, we've made some improvements to the swipe out sidebar panel to make it a little bit easier to navigate and to choose between different options on there. Uh, in fact, I can show that to you. Let's, uh, let's bring up the, the product camera and uh, I'll just show you what that looks like. So if I go into any particular app on the system, I'll just pull this chart plotter open for a second. When I swipe out the sidebar, of course I have to answer this question. No, I don't wanna do that. All right, when I swipe in from the side, you'll notice this new little strip here added to the swipe out uh, sidebar. So it gives me a little bit easier selection of data one, data two, uh, the Mercury engine sidebar, the audio controls, and all that sort of stuff. And after a few seconds, it retracts just slightly to get out of the way. But if you want it back, you can just touch on it or pull it back out uh, to get back to those selectors. And of course, if you want to shut the data bar entirely, you can either swipe it in or you could just uh, close it with your mouse. Uh, a couple of other things that are in Lighthouse 316. Um, we uh, added something called browser app integration. If you look over the notes, you may wonder what that is. Um, there's a lot of devices now on board your boat that actually have their own apps built into them. A good example of this is the control system for Seakeeper Gyros. Um, if you have underwater lighting from Shadowcaster, uh, Lumashore, uh, some of the other lighting technologies, um, their light controller module actually has a web page built into the module. And Axiom accesses the lighting controls essentially through a web browser plugin. Um, so what we allow you to do starting in Lighthouse 316 is with any of these hardware enabled browser apps, you can pull those apps into the main user interface and run them alongside other apps like your radar, your chart, your sonar. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier to get to some of those things that you use uh, all the time. Um, another thing that we added in Lighthouse 316, and this is actually directly related to some feedback that came from a prior Raymarine Live session. Um, you may remember a little while ago, we added um, an anchoring wizard that helps you to uh, set your anchor, uh, put out your swing circle, drag circle, plot it all on the chart. Um, someone had put in a comment and said, gee, this is pretty cool, but it sure would be nice if we could add uh, keel and waterline offsets into the uh, anchor drag system. Uh, so I sent that back up. Our guys took a look at it and said, yep, we can do that. So uh, here it is in Lighthouse 316. Uh, that change is in there. So if you've tried that feature, uh, you'll find those extra settings in there you can use to make it even just a little bit more precise and a little more useful. Uh, and if you haven't tried it, definitely give it a shot the next time you anchor your boat. It is uh, it is pretty cool. Um, so Lighthouse Havar is available uh, right now on raymarine.com. 
or through the software update menu in your Axiom display. Uh, from the home screen, just touch on the settings button and you'll see a big button that says update software. And you can go either uh, through Wi-Fi or you can go from a uh, card that you pre-downloaded from raymarine.com. Um, that uh, software update takes uh, maybe five or 10 minutes uh, to get applied to the system. Um, there are a bunch of other uh, bug fixes, uh, little tweaks, little improvements in it as well. If you pop onto raymarine.com, uh, go to our software update section, there is actually a full software history and bug list posted for that. So you can see um, all the minor things they fixed in there as well. Uh, this past uh, couple of days, um, we have been at the METS show over in Amsterdam. It's a pretty big annual event for the uh, entire marine industry. So METS is the Marine Equipment Trade Show. Uh, it takes place typically every year in Amsterdam, though it did get canceled last year. Uh, but it, was, uh, it went on this year. Um, a lot of product news uh, coming out of there as well. Uh, so definitely, um, if you follow any of the boating magazines or um, you get uh, updates from around the industry, take a look at some of the news that has come out of there. Lots of exciting things uh, every year make their debut at METS. So uh, tonight, we are going to be talking about engine integration. Um, we know that a lot of you want to be able to see as much information about your boat's systems as possible on your MFDs. And engine integration is something that has been out there for quite a long time, but there's certainly a lot of mystery around it, a lot of confusion as well. Sometimes it's just not clear what it takes to get uh, engine brand you know, A to talk to uh, device B and then ultimately get it into a Raymarine system. So hopefully I can take some of that mystery away. So the first thing I wanna show you are the engine app pages on Axiom. So we are actually gonna bring our, um, our MFD camera back up, Mr. Producer Man. Let me get it back out here to the home screen. And <clears throat> I have uh, pre-populated a few pages on the system. So first, let me talk a little bit about how the data gets from your engine into the MFD. <clears throat> Um, primarily, the way it comes in is using a data protocol called NMEA 2000. That's the National Marine Electronics Association 2000 standard. Um, it is something that is used across our entire industry, and it is adopted by many engine manufacturers as well. Um, so there are sentences built into there. They're called PGNs um, that carry very common uh, marine data information. So inside of every Axiom, there is an application here called the Dashboard. And when I open the Dashboard app, it has some NMEA 2000 um, engine pages. And these can be custom configured for your boat. So any engine that outputs NEMA 2000 uh, information can populate um, these engine display pages. Um, when you first set up your Axiom out of the box, you may remember that one of the things it asks um, is a little bit of information about your boat. You tell it how long it is and how wide it is and how tall it is, and that's all for auto routing. And then it asks you how many engines you have, uh, what brand they are, um, how many batteries you have, how many fuel tanks, how many black water tanks, gray water tanks, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, that little interview that it's doing is to find out data to populate the dashboard pages here um, on the MFD. So absent any particular um, manufacturer specified engine information, um, the NEMA 2000 data pages can show lots of different things. So you can see on this display here, it's actually set up for a dual engine boat, um, but we can show um, multiple uh, configurations of this. You can do uh, single, uh, dual, uh, triple, quads. Uh, we might even be able to go a little bit further than that. Um, but you get the gist of any of it anyway. So it'll um, auto configure the layout. Um, you can see here we have our tachometers, um, our big round dials. Uh, so that'll give us engine RPMs. We have the engine gear above that. Uh, to the left, we have oil pressure. To the right, we have water temperature. We've got some battery voltage on here. We have trim tabs. We have fuel levels. So the data that you see on here is all coming over that NMEA 2000 stream. Um, and exactly what you will see uh, varies depending on what your engines output. So not every engine system outputs every single piece of information. So it is possible that you may have some data that either does not get displayed 
or there may be some blanks in here where your, your engine is not sending a particular parameter over that could fill this up. Um, there are other ways we can display engine data on here as well. Um, and they are tied more to particular brands or particular manufacturers of uh, engines. Um, so we're going to take a look first at Mercury. So I'm going to go back out to my home screen here. And I actually already popped in the Mercury vessel view display. Let me just give you a peek at what it looks like. Um, you'll notice that this looks, uh, for anybody that has Mercury engines on their boat, this looks just like the display that you might have on a Vessel View 5 or a Vessel View 7 uh, display. And that's because it is the same display um, that you have on a Vessel View 5 or a Vessel View 7. Um, so for this particular setup here, um, Raymarine worked with uh, Mercury Engineering um, and we built this to their specifications. Um, so this is essentially a carbon copy of what one of their vessel view hardware displays can do. Now, the idea behind it is it allows you to eliminate that piece of vessel view hardware off your helm and devote more room to giant MFDs. Um, everybody likes that. Everybody loves big screens. Nobody wants these little tiny engine displays. Get them out of the way. Uh, put your engine data on the MFD. Now, the reason for going to something like this uh, partnered up with an engine builder like uh, Mercury is this isn't purely just displaying the output of the engines. This is also showing you alarms. It's showing you diagnostics. Um, you can get into some of the engine's key features uh, in here. Um, so it's very, very tightly integrated into the Axiom system. So if you're you know running along and you're not even looking at the engine page, you're looking at your radar, you're looking at your fish finder, and all of a sudden you get a, you know, an overheating warning or a low oil pressure or something like that. Um, it pops up on the system. It comes up color coded with all the proper Mercury graphics and messages and alarms uh, to alert you to whatever condition is going on in the system. So that's uh, kind of what happens through uh, something like this. And we're going to take a look at the behind the scenes uh, hardware that it takes to make this happen in just a second. So in addition to Mercury, we can also do this with Yamaha uh, engines. And just to give you a glimpse of that, here is a Yamaha display page. Um, so we connect up to their Command Link Plus uh, or Command Link network, either one. And again, this looks exactly like the layout you would have on a CL5 or a CL7 Yamaha display. Instead, it's just showing up on your Axiom. Um, so you can run it full screen like this and get all your engine data, but you also have access to your radar, your chart, your sonar. And similar to what we're doing with Mercury, um, you're getting Yamaha specific alarms, diagnostics, um, and other controls uh, through the system. And you can see um, all of the fonts, the graphics, and everything are exactly you know, Yamaha specific uh, in here. And we'll take a look at what it takes to make this work. There's a couple of different configurations um, for Yamaha that we work with as well. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, gee, I don't have Mercury and I don't have Yamaha. You know, how can I get my data up here? Um, well, there's a lot of ways that you can do it. And I, um, I built out a whole bunch of information tonight. So hopefully uh, just about everybody will go away knowing what it's going to take to get engine data on their MFD. Um, and there are so many options out there to do it that there is almost no engine out there that cannot get data uh, to one of these displays. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a new engine or even if it's a very, very old or virtually antique engine. Um, there are ways to get data out of it um, or make data uh, and get it up onto these displays. <clears throat> um, let's pause for just a second and take a look at some of the questions that have been coming in. I see quite a few starting to pile up already. So before we go into the next part of the show, let's hit up a few questions. Uh, what do you got for me, Mr. Producer Man? From David, I have a Raymarine Hybrid Touch and want to upgrade to later technology. My system is 2005 vintage. All right, David. Um, so an 05 model, you might have an E-series, maybe an E-series widescreen display, probably a widescreen if it's hybrid touch. Um, I would take a look at an Axiom Pro, either an Axiom Pro S or an Axiom Pro RVX. Either one of those models is actually a good upgrade path for you. Um, those older hybrid touch systems are actually new enough that they made the transition to digital radar. So if you have a radar on your boat, more than likely it will work on a new Axiom system, which is great. If you have other Raymarine products, you have uh, instruments, autopilot, GPS sensors, VHF radios, all that sort of stuff. 
Um, we do make a lot of different uh, adapters or cable adapters um, to make just about everything you have work. Um, what I do highly suggest is pop over to our website, go to raymarine.custhelp.com, uh, open a ticket on there with our technical team. Um, let them know exactly what you have on your boat. Um, try to include as much detail as you can, not only your screen, but all the peripherals that are plugged into it. Um, and they can help you make a plan to upgrade that. Um, but there is definitely some, uh, some easy upgrade paths for you. What else do we have in the question queue from Max? Which sonar system is best at spotting crab or lobster pots, thereby helping to prevent the hideous damage they can cause? From the UK South Coast. Well, I'll tell you, Max, we have those same lobster pots here as well. I'm, on, uh, I'm in New England. I'm in our uh, office in Nashua, New Hampshire. I do a lot of boating uh, around here and out on Boston Harbor, and we've certainly got the crab and lobster pots here too. Um, so as for what sonar system is best at spotting them, um, just about any sonar can do it. I will say that I, I assume the, the nature of your question is you don't want to be running them over, <clears throat> which means ideally you'd be looking for something forward looking in a sonar system to do that. And that is um, actually a pretty difficult task, believe it or not. So on the Ray Marine lineup, you could definitely see crab pots, lobster pots with our side vision sonar for sure. Uh, you could see it with most of the down vision or even the traditional down looking chirp systems. Um, it depends on how close you pass uh, to it, whether they go through the transducer's beam, uh, but the side vision or the even sometimes the 3D, um, that's going to be wide enough to pick uh, those up. However, you're going to be seeing them as you're going alongside them, not as you're really running necessarily over the top of them. Uh, forward looking sonar technology is out there. Um, the, I guess one of the trade-offs with forward-looking sonar is you have to be going very, very slow for it to develop a good picture in front of the boat. Um, and a lobster or crab pot is not a great target for a forward-looking sonar because all you really have is the rope uh, coming up. So I'm not exactly sure how well that is going to work. And I kind of rambled a little bit. I hope that at least gives you some guidance towards what to look for. Um, but I don't know that there is a great solution to prevent you from running those down in the first place. Um, Rather than sonar, uh, maybe something like a FLIR camera with our clear crews might be a good alternative. Um, if those crab pots have buoys on them, uh, the clear crews uh, video analytics can actually detect those and point them out and give you a little audible alarm as you're coming up on them. Let's see if we can take one more and then we'll move into the main program. Uh, David has upgraded electronics from a C120 to Axiom. My system was integrated into my C120. Will it integrate with Axiom? What cables do I need? I have twin Crusader 8.1 inboards. Great question, David. We're actually going to talk a little bit about how to make that happen. Um, Crusader engines um, generally have um, two possibilities. Um, some of them speak in an electronic protocol called J1939. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. That is actually an automotive-based protocol, but they make converters that can take J1939 into NEMA 2000 and pump it in. Um, some Crusader engines speak uh, in a language called uh, MEFI, M-E-F-I, Marine Electronic Fuel Injection. Um, and there is a company that makes an interface that can plug into the ECU on these older uh, MEFI engines uh, and pull the data out that way, convert it to NEMA 2000 and read it. Um, if you have that integrated now into your C120, um, then almost certainly um, that will work in Axiom. Um, on your C120, it probably came in through a CTOC2 connection. Um, on an Axiom, it'll come in through your CTOC NG connection. They are essentially the same protocol, just slightly different wiring. Um, so we'll change um, essentially one cable in your network. In fact, we make a, a CTOC2 to CTOC NG interface cable. Uh, it has different connectors on each end, so all you'd have to do is just change it out, um, and your Axiom should plug right into that. Um, I will try to put that part number into the comments later on for you, David. All right, um, let's talk a little bit about some different engine interfacing hardware. I'm going to start with this little guy here on my desk, and the reason I'm going to start with this one is it is an engine interface that Ray Marine makes. It's called an ECI 100, and I'm going to bring it up on the product camera. So there's not a lot to this. When you look at this, um, this piece of hardware, you've got two connections and two lights on it. Uh, so one side of it is a CTOC NG connector. So this plugs into 
the Boats Navigation CAN bus network, SeaTalk uh, NG, and NMEA 2000. You'll hear those terms thrown about uh, here in Ray Marine Land. They are exactly the same data protocol. Um, what makes SeaTalk NG different from NEMA 2000 is the connectors that are used on the end of it. Um, we made some improvements to the base uh, NMEA 2000 connectors um, to make them a little bit more installer proof um, and also to make them work a little bit better with some of the legacy instrument systems that we offer. Um, but the protocol that travels over the wires is identical. So NEMA 2000 actually is the data traveling on a SeaTalk NG network. So we got SeaTalk NG on this end, and there's a little LED light that'll turn on uh, to tell you that we have SeaTalk NG active. Um, this end is actually um, either NMEA 2000 or J1939 CAN bus. And there's another um, indicator light on this end. So this ECI 100 can be used for a couple of different things. Um, it can convert um, engine data um, for Volvo Penta systems, uh, for Yamaha, for Yanmar, Honda, and for Caterpillar displays, if you happen to have a Caterpillar system with um, one of their MPD uh, screen units, uh, that's their marine power display. Um, so what this actually does is it'll take in NEMA 2000 or J1939 in the case of the Caterpillars. Internally, this converts it to uh, NEMA 2000 um, and then sends it out the other side. The other thing that this device can do is it can provide steering control um, for systems that are running um, Volvo Penta IPS or Yamaha Helmmaster. Um, so we will often use this device to integrate a Raymarine autopilot uh, with uh, Helmmaster or uh, Volvo Penta IPS. Um, and they will also pass engine data through as well uh, as the steering um, information. Um, so what these little gateway devices do, and we're going to see a bunch of other gateways um, by other manufacturers uh, tonight, um, but they all do um, a couple of core things. They convert data to get it into the proper format to go over a NEMA 2000 marine navigation network. Um, the other thing that they provide is opto-isolation. Um, a lot of these data buses are slightly dissimilar. So for example, we might have J1939 automotive data on this side. We have NMEA 2000 marine data on this side. So the engine guys don't want their data getting polluted with marine data and vice versa. So what this does is it kind of acts as a gatekeeper. It makes sure that only the right data flows from one side to the other. It also prevents any uh, strange signals, uh, ground loops, uh, things like that from getting through the system and causing noise or interference or uh, or worse, you know, electrical damage um, on the other side of the network. Um, and that's uh, one of the things that that almost all of these gateways have in common is they provide that protection uh, as well. So this one is called ECI 100. Um, it has some particular um, applications for steering and engine control, um, but this can be used with a lot of NEMA 2000 or uh, J1939 systems. So. Um, I'm going to go to my main event tonight. And normally, I'm honestly not a big fan of bringing PowerPoint onto Raymarine Live. In fact, I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint at all. I think it's awful. It puts me to sleep. Uh, but we had a lot of data to show tonight, a lot of things to organize. Uh, so I did just make some very simple um, uh, slides that I want to bring up just so... Um, you can see um, some of these different pieces of hardware and some of the options um, that it takes uh, to make this all work. And this was kind of the most efficient way to do it. But I'm going to stay over here in the little window um, so I can make funny faces and I can wave my hands around and do other things that hopefully will make you laugh um, and uh, keep you engaged. Um, I promise I won't put you to sleep. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff. So the first category we're going to talk about is what I uh, am calling manufacturer-defined integration. And this is the, um, the Mercury and the Yamaha system, where we have a very, very tight integration that is providing not only data, but also alarms and diagnostics. Um, so with Mercury, their system is called Vessel View uh, for the purposes of displaying it. And this is the device that goes in behind the scenes to make the Mercury integration work. Um, this is a new device. It's been out for a little bit under a year. It's called SmartCraft Connect. So if you want to run that full 
uh, Mercury sanctioned, signed off, blessed engine data display pages on your Axiom, you have to have one of these on your boat. Um, there are four versions of it available. Um, there is a single engine version for engines where this is going to live under the engine cowl. There is a single engine version that lives under the helm. There is a dual engine version for under the helm and a triple or quad engine version for under the helm. So you do need to order the proper uh, SmartCraft Connect gateway for your setup. Um, when you order this device, um, you're going to want to order this from your local Mercury parts counter. Uh, walk into your boat dealer, go see the parts guy, pay him a visit. Um, he will help you get the proper one uh, for your boat setup. Uh, but the other thing that he will be able to do as well is he will be able to program this device for you. Um, it does require some configuration. They basically need to know the engine serial number that it's going to be tied to. Um, they need to know what type of a system um, the SparkCraft Connect is going to be used with because it works with actually both Raymarine and Garmin systems. So they have to tell her that. Um, they need to know if you have the digital uh, throttle and shift option on your boat. That gets programmed in here as well. Um, so there is a little bit of configuration that they need to do before you can plug this in. Um, here's what it actually looks like all broken out. There's two cables that come off the end of it. And kind of similar to the connections we were looking at on my ECI 100, um, we've got two connectors on this SmartCraft Connect gateway. <clears throat> the connector labeled F. Uh, up here at the top um, on the right, that is actually the NMEA 2000 connector. So that is going to plug into the boat's navigation network um, on a Raymarine system that plugs into SeaTalk NG. Uh, this end, uh, labeled G, uh, is a 10 pin connector that will tie into uh, the SmartCraft uh, network underneath your helm. Um, and this is kind of uh, what it would look like. Uh, here is that SmartCraft Connect gateway. This line is plugged into a standard NMEA 2000 backbone, and your MFDs would be plugged into one of these Ts as well. Um, and then this other side uh, comes up and plugs in, in this case, to a SmartCraft uh, junction box. Um, this SmartCraft junction box is basically a CAN bus distribution point. Um, all your different SmartCraft accessories plug in here, things like your throttles, uh, your steering, if it's a steer-by-wire boat, um, the ignition, uh, another thing, they all plug into these five-way or six-way SmartCraft uh, junction blocks. So you just find an empty port, plug it in, um, and it's good to go. It gets powered um, by the SmartCraft uh, system and uh, comes to life as soon as it is plugged in and the ignition switches are turned on. So it is actually pretty simple, relatively speaking, to install. Um, it's probably a little intimidating if you look you know, inside the helm of your Mercury equipped, there is a lot of wiring in there and a lot of plugs and connectors, but once you kind of get the lay of the land, um, you can find the SmartCraft junction box, find an empty port, and then it becomes pretty straightforward actually of where it's all gonna plug in. Um, the real trick with this is that you do have to get it programmed before you take it down to the boat and plug it in. So definitely get with your local Mercury parts counter, talk to your boat dealer. Um, this might be something on a service visit, they could add this to your system if you're interested in it. Um, and it is pretty cool. It brings all that data to life right on your Raymarine system. Um, the other way you can get one of these, of course, is if you are shopping new boats. If you're looking at a new boat that is Raymarine equipped, if it's going to have Mercury engines on it, this is something that your new boat uh, manufacturer uh, can do right from the factory for you. All right, let's talk a little bit about Yamaha. So Yamaha is actually a very similar uh, type of setup. Um, so we looked earlier at the Yamaha display page. Again, this looks just like what you'd get on a Yamaha CL5 or CL7 display um, on board your boat. Um, but here it is, you know, as big as whatever size Axiom MFD you have. So you can have a 24-inch Yamaha display if you want. Uh, and of course, you can you know, change apps and look at anything else. So what is the device that makes the magic happen? Uh, this is it right here. This is called a Yamaha 6YG gateway. Uh, 6YG is the first three letters of its part number. And the part number changes every once in a while because they change the style or they update the software in it. But it's always called a 6YG NEMA 2000 gateway. Um, the one on the left is the most current version. The one on the right is a slightly older version. And I think what has changed on them is the style of the connectors. Um, and from what I gather, 
this newer style one, this is a command link plus connector. This is a original style Yamaha command link uh, connector on this one over here. Uh, but notice the other connection on both of these devices is a threaded five pin um, NMEA 2000 connection. So how does this tie into the boat? Um, pretty much the same way that the Mercury one did. Um, here is the NMEA 2000 Yamaha gateway. Um, one uh, little pigtail plugs into the Yamaha command link um, bus right here. Um, the NEMA 2000 line goes out here, and this is what's going to connect to your SeaTac NG network and all your Raymarine stuff. Um, and all the engine data is going to flow from the Yamaha side through the gateway, through the, um, the opto isolation protection built into it, and into your Raymarine system. So this setup here will get you all of the Yamaha engine data, fuel tank levels, um, alarms, diagnostics, all that sort of stuff in the um, Yamaha app. Now, I mentioned earlier, um, if you're paying attention, that the ECI 100, the Raymarine uh, gateway, does work with Yamaha systems. Um, if you use our gateway, you will not be able to use the Yamaha display pages. Um, you will get data in the generic NMEA 2000 dashboard. You will have engine dials and all that stuff in there. But on the Yamaha specific pages, you have to use the Yamaha hardware. Um, that is something required by Yamaha. So keep that in mind. Um, if you want to use the Yamaha app, you have to have the Yamaha gateway in place. Now, not too long ago, Yamaha introduced another system um, called Helmmaster EX. Uh, so that is their new state-of-the-art drive-by-wire steering and control system. It has electric steering. It's got some really cool stuff in it. Um, we can work with Helmmaster EX systems as well. It actually requires two interface modules from Yamaha to make that happen. Um, the first one that you need is the standard Yamaha 6YG NMEA 2000 gateway, number 13 here on this diagram. Um, and it ties in to the command link bus, command link plus bus, excuse me. Um, and then it ties in to NEMA 2000, CTOC NG over here. And that provide, passes all the engine data through. Um, there is a second module up here, this uh, one labeled number one. And this is actually an HDMI module. If you want to run one of these Helmmaster EX systems with Ray Marine, you do need to run Axiom XL multifunction displays. And the reason is the video uh, from this uh, control module gets passed up over HDMI into the Axiom system. Um, and then there's actually a little remote control unit that comes with it as well. So you can control some of the key engine features that way. Um, so this is the setup for Helmmaster EX. It does require uh, two interface modules if you want to do that. And you have to be running Axiom XL. Those are the big takeaways there. Um, we're going to hit just a couple more of, um, of these setups, and then we'll break again for questions. So let me just get through this one more section, and uh, I see the questions keep coming in, which is fantastic. Keep popping the questions in, and uh, we will try to answer as many of them as we can in the hour. And again, if I don't get to your question live on the air, um, you will get an answer from me because I'll go back in after the show is over, and I'll keep answering questions as long as it takes. So the next category I want to talk about is um, systems that do require manufacturer-specific hardware. Um, and one of those we kind of talked about a little bit, um, that is Volvo Penta. Uh, we mentioned earlier that the ECI 100 um, can work in a Volvo Penta system, for example, with a Volvo Penta IPS. And you can get all the engine data and you can get all the steering control out of it. Um, they do offer a gateway of their own. So you can actually use either one on a Volvo Penta system. You can go with the Raymarine ECI 100, or you can go with this Volvo Penta gateway, um, which looks strikingly familiar, um, very similar to the Mercury gateway, and actually not that dissimilar from the Raymarine gateway. And that, once again, two connections on it. So in this case, you've got one um, plug that plugs into the Volvo electronic vessel control system. And the other side of it is standard NMEA 2000. And the gateway uh, does all its protection, uh, opto isolation. It bridges the data back and forth and keeps everybody happy. Um, so that gateway is available from Volvo Penta specifically for their engines. So if you want to stick 
entirely with factory engine hardware, you can do that, um, or you can use the Raymarine ECI 100 instead. Um, it does work in that application too. All right, um, so before we jump into the next set of engine manufacturers, let's take a look at some questions. I know we have a bunch of good ones have been coming in here, and I see, I see, some, I see some that we're about to get to in here as well. <laughs> Uh, Brian would like to know, is there any way to get the anchor drag alarm from an Axiom to display and beep on I-70S displays? I have an I-70 at the internal nav station that I want to have beep if the anchor alarm gets triggered. Uh, Brian, let me do a little bit of research into that. But as I recall, the anchor drag alarm is something that is unique to Axiom. And I don't believe it is repeated over the CTOK NG network. We have different classes of alarms on the system. Some things are locally triggered. Some things are network wide. That particular anchor drag alarm, I think is local only, which means it would sound on Axiom and any other Axioms that are networked together, but I'm not sure that it passes to the I-70s. Um, another way around this, potentially we have an alarm repeater module that plugs in on the network, um, but I will actually do a little bit more research and put a more detailed answer in the comments for you on this. Um, and there's got to be some way that we can uh, wake you up if your anchor is dragging, which obviously we want to be able to do. Um, so I'll find an answer for you and I'll drop it in the comments. From Barry, Raymarine has had two recent updates and I have not done the last two updates to my Axiom. The boat is put away for the winter. Do I have to do the updates in order or can I just do the most recent? Uh, yes, you can do just the most recent update. So whenever you put an update on your system, you are getting a cumulative build of everything we have released to date. So you can go right to Axiom 316, or if your boat is already put away, um, chances are there'll be something new in the spring when you pull your boat back out. There might be a 317 um, or something further down the road. Um, but whatever is current at the time, you can install just that one. Um, and it will take that and you won't miss any updates or changes. Um, another thing to remember when you download our software updates, not only are you getting an update for your Axiom displays, um, but it also pulls down a file alongside that has updates for all the peripherals as well. So if we updated the pilot or we updated the radar or the GPS sensors or your VHF radios or um, anything that got a software change, um, you're getting all of those in that update. So when you do pull your boat out, um, when you go to do your updates in the spring, make sure you turn everything on first so that Axiom can see everything that you have on your network, um, and then it'll dole out the updates as needed. Vincent would like to know, make sure, or, oh, this is like some advice from Vincent. Make sure you put what cables are needed for the Yamaha command link, please. As a promotional guy for you guys, I get this question a lot. Ah, okay. Uh, yes. So. Um, when you do the Yamaha gateways, um, there are two cables that you generally need to make all the physical connections. One of them is a uh, NEMA 2000 to CTOK NG adapter cable. Um, that's usually a part number A06075. I use that one a lot, so I know that one off the top of my head. So that takes care of the Raymarine side of it. Um, on the other side of it, you need a Yamaha command link or command link plus um, bus cable. Um, they're usually little shorty cables. I think they're about a foot long. Um, and you'll usually order that at the same time you order the gateway. Um, I've done a couple of these um, installs in the past and ordered the parts online. Um, and it is possible to buy the gateway either bundled with the Yamaha required cables or to buy the gateway alone. Um, so do make sure if you're ordering this and doing it yourself that you uh, do get that command link uh, bus cable that you're going to need. And let's take one more before we move on. Jim Pasco. Nice boat, Jim. I like that. I have twin Caterpillar C7 engines. What do I need to be able to display the data for them? Uh, so Caterpillar we have coming up um, in the section after this. But Caterpillar engines, they speak in a protocol called J1939. Um, cat, a lot of cat engines obviously come out of heavy equipment, automotive, over the road trucking, and then they adapt them for marine use. Um, some of them are marine specific, but the, um, the data protocol that they run on their engine bus is kind of shared across all their different platforms. So they're using um, a more um, uh, heavy duty uh, diesel uh, protocol. 
Um, so that J1939 um, can be adapted to NEMA 2000. So you can either run your cats uh, through one of these ECI 100s, where there are some third-party gateways available that I have coming up. Uh, they can also do the conversion from J1939 into NMEA 2000. Um, there's several different vendors that make them. Um, if you want to use our ECI 100, it does require you to have one of the CAT MPD displays, the marine power displays. Um, there's three different sizes of them, I believe, like a 7, a 10-inch, and then a color one that I think is also 10-inch. Um, and those displays, I believe, have the um, an extra CAN bus connector on them uh, that's needed to make that jump. We'll have some more on Caterpillar coming up, though, so definitely uh, stay tuned. All right, so let's uh, let's go back to uh, PowerPoint hell for a second. Hopefully it's not too torturous. Um, so what we're going to look at here are some outboard engine manufacturers that are using straight up NEMA 2000 to tie their engines into the boat. So this is actually pretty cool. Uh, these guys are um, not doing anything overly complex in terms of getting the data out of the engine and into the network to be shared with third-party devices. Um, so the first one of those is Suzuki. And I saw someone had asked about Suzuki someplace along the way. I saw it in the comments there. Um, so Suzuki is doing a essentially a straight up NEMA 2000 output <clears throat> from, uh, from their engines um, to the boat. So you would need to order from your Suzuki dealer. Uh, I believe it's called a SIMS cable. Um, and all it is really is it's an extra long NEMA 2000 spur cable. It has a Suzuki specific connector on one end that plugs into your engine's uh, ECU. Um, and then the other end of it has a NEMA 2000 device net connector that will plug in uh, to the navigation network on the boat. If you're going to SeaTalk NG, um, you'll just snap a little adapter cable on the end of it to take it from device net, which is the screw on uh, to one of these SeaTalk NG white spur cables. Um, it's just a little tiny snap on and that'll plug right into the network. And whammo, you have Suzuki engine data uh, almost uh, instantly. So what's really cool is not only does Suzuki do this, but Honda does this. Evinrude does this. Um, so all three of these systems are basically doing the same thing. Um, you'll get a manufacturer-specific interface cable coming off the engine. Um, if you have twins, if you have triples, if you have quads, um, they have a cable that supports that as well. Um, but it basically kind of does all of that initial uh, pull the data off the engines, brings it down to a single connection point that then plugs into the network. Very, very simple integration that way. Um, the data is all standard NEMA 2000 PGNs. Uh, your Raymarine system should be able to pick it right up. Um, here's an example. This is actually a Suzuki diagram. Um, but the, this applies pretty equally to, um, to Honda uh, and to Evinrood as well. Um, maybe we can flip this around just so these guys can see it a little better. There we go. Um, just to kind of show you, um, this leg here is what is coming in from the engine. Um, so on the Suzuki, they call it a BCM harness. Uh, in Honda and Evinrood, I think it's called an ECU harness. But this is basically a connection that's under the engine cowl. Um, it comes down. Um, in this case, it's breaking out to uh, two um, connections, uh, but both of these now are um, NMEA 2000 data, and they're plugging into a standard navigation network. Um, all of these little T connectors here um, are just like um, a standard NEMA 2000 T uh, or a SeaTalk NG three-way connector. And in this case, these Suzuki um, engine instruments are straight up NMEA 2000 devices. Uh, there's no real trickery going on with them. Um, it's plugged in just like an I-70 instrument would be, just like an Axiom would be. Um, so that data is right there and it's available for any device on the network. Um, you can see they're actually not using a gateway uh, of any kind here. Um, it's just really straight through data, which is pretty cool. All right, so I've seen a lot of questions in there about diesels, and we know that there is a lot of them uh, out there. <clears throat> and the one thing that the vast majority of diesel engines have in common um, is that they all use SAE J1939 um, engine data. Um, SAE is the Society of Automotive Engineers. So kind of like NMEA is the National Marine Electronics Association, 
and they came out with their protocol for shipping around marine data on board a boat. The Society of Automotive Engineers adopted their J1939 standard for data communication uh, for uh, heavy-duty diesel engines used in trucks and all sorts of other applications. Um, and that finds its way onto boats in a lot of different diesels. So if you have a boat with diesels, uh, chances are it is running J1939. Um, and so who are some of the brands that use J1939? Uh, Cat does, uh, Crusader does, and I know Crusader makes a lot of gas engines. Um, but they use J1939 um, in some of them, not all of them, but some of them. Uh, Cummins, Detroit, you know, you, you can read them as well as I can here. Um, almost every major brand uh, of diesel uh, outputs J1939. So that means you can get into that network with um, a third party J1939 to NMEA 2000 adapter. Um, in many cases, you can do that with a Raymarine ECI 100. Um, and if not with a Raymarine unit, um, there are um, units out there from uh, Maritron um, is a provider of that. Uh, yacht Devices uh, is another big one. Uh, Digital Yacht is another company that makes uh, an adapter for this. Uh, Noland Engineering is another company. Um, and I'll have a list at the end of some of the different providers of this uh, type of interface. Um, if you shop them around a little bit, um, many of those companies um, can sell you not only the interface module, uh, but also an adapter cable that has the manufacturer specific connectors on the end. Um, so you can plug right into your Perkins diesels or right into your Yanmar system or right into your Detroit's. Um, and they'll tell you exactly where you have to connect it up. Um, but it is pretty nice when it all plugs together. You don't have to splice anything. There's no, no science uh, project involved in it. Um, so if you have diesels, think J1939. Now, there are some diesels that do have NEMA 2000. Um, oh, before I go that, down that road, here's, the, here's an example of one of those uh, interfaces. This is made by Yacht Devices. So this is a J1939 to NMEA 2000 uh, adapter. Um, it plugs in on the engine bus on this side. And basically, you can see what this is, is it's a pass-through connector. You're going to unplug something on the wiring harness. Um, and then with the two cables you have in your hand, the male side, the female side, you're going to plug them in to their respective plugs here. And you're creating a T. And that T pulls off. Um, there's a little circuit board in here that does all the conversions. It does the optical isolation. And you're getting standard NMEA 2000 out of this connector right here. Um, so I was going to say that there are some diesel manufacturers that have departed from J1939, or they are providing electronics that are doing the conversion from J1939 to NMEA 2000 um, to make themselves a little bit more marine-centric or marine-friendly when they get on board um, a lot of boats these days. One of those manufacturers is Yanmar. Um, so with Yanmar, um, many of their Modern diesels have J1939 as the standard communication protocol all over the engine. And the engine actually talks to the Yanmar display in J1939. Um, but that display, if you flip it around and look at the back side of it, and this is the back of a Yanmar, um, their new uh, YD42 color engine display. Um, on the back of it here, there's two ports. Um, one of them is a NEMA 2000 connection. So this is where you'll tie in to get data to Axiom. Um, and then this YD42 harness is the Yanmar specific uh, industrial J1939 protocol coming into the display. So the display is acting as a gateway for you in this type of application. Now, I realize Yanmar engines have been around for quite a long time. They have a, quite an extensive list of models. Um, there are many out there that are uh, practically ancient, and they are super reliable, and they run forever and ever and ever. Um, so there are some Yanmar models out there that do not have any electronic instrumentation on them. They're all mechanical systems with mechanical gauges. Um, can you get data out of those? Uh, yes, you can. Stay tuned. We'll show you how to do that. Um, some of the newer uh, Yanmar systems that have uh, some electronic controls or electronic monitoring on them, we can use a J1939 adapter uh, to grab data off of the uh, engine uh, data bus. Um, and then in their newest uh, 
models here that use this YD42 display. If you have that display already on board your boat, you have essentially a Yanmar NEMA 2000 gateway built into it. And you can just tap right off the back on that NEMA 2000 port and get all the data you want into your Axioms and all your other devices that can display it. All right, so let's say you have an older boat. Um, and I know there's a lot of them out there and I love old boats. And one of the cool things about old boats is that we can upgrade them with technology uh, to make them um, a little bit more exciting, a little more efficient, um, maximize our time out on the water um, and keep those classic boats uh, out there and doing what they do best, that is boating. Um, so if you have an older boat and it doesn't have any visible signs of electronic integration on it, or it's a very early electronically controlled engine, um, there are companies out there that have solutions for these types of setups. Um, here's three examples of them. <clears throat> and there are probably some others. And if anybody from uh, any of these manufacturers is watching and saying, hey, you forgot me, you forgot me, uh, drop a comment in, uh, make yourself known, let us know what you can do. Uh, because a lot of people will probably be watching this after the fact. Um, so these devices that we're looking at here, let me start with the one on the left and the one in the center. Um, the one on the left is made by a company called Noland Engineering. Um, the one in the center is made by Actisense. Um, and what these devices do is they can take the analog uh, sense, uh, sensor uh, feeds on your engines, convert them to digital, and then output NMEA 2000. Um, so you can't see it quite as well on the NoLand uh, just because of the angle of the picture, but there is actually a terminal strip on the inside here, and there are a series of um, uh, inputs and outputs. Um, on the ActiSense, you can see it right here across the top. Um, essentially what you do, um, it'll come with directions and it'll tell you how to tap into uh, the tachometer pulses for engine RPM, how to tap into the oil pressure sender, uh, the water temperature sender, uh, the boost pressure senders, and anything else that you have. Um, these are a little bit more complicated to install because you have to first find all these sensors on the engine, locate the wiring. Um, you have to trace them up into your helm. Um, some of these uh, inputs you might have to tap into at the engine side. Some of them you can tap up in the helm. If you have analog gauges, you can get it on the gauge side, which is a little bit easier uh, because you know exactly what the wires are going to that gauge do. Um, but one way or the other, you can get at all of those analog signals. Um, it usually requires programming these devices with a computer. So they'll come with some software. You'll log into the device. You'll tell it, all right, channel one. Channel one has my oil pressure sender and the normal acceptable range for oil pressure on this engine is, you know, zero to 45 PSI. And then you'll move on to the next one and the next one. Um, but the nice thing is once it's all set up, um, you are getting full fledged NMEA 2000 sentences out of these devices. Um, and they do work pretty well. Um, I'll have a picture coming up in a second, but someone contacted me actually yesterday uh, that saw that this broadcast was coming up and couldn't attend. Um, and he used the uh, Actisense uh, EMU-1 uh, on his boat um, and uh, had pretty good luck with it. Um, the last device out here on the right is another engine gateway. This is made by a company called Fox Marine. It's a fairly small operation. I think this is uh, someone that had a passion for boating and a passion for electronics. And um, they uh, combined their two passions together and made a little side business out of it. Uh, so what Fox Marine does is they make um, these engine gateways for a lot of the sort of first generation uh, EFI, electronic fuel injection engines. Uh, they call it MEFI, M-E-F-I, Marine Electronic Fuel Injection. Uh, but I think it was uh, typically General Motors based uh, fuel injection. Um, so they offer them for MIFI 1 through MIFI 7 or 8. Um, they have a, a whole array of these different modules, depending on what generation of motor you have. They have a couple of other ones as well that work with older Volvo Penta engines. Um, it is a plug and play solution. You plug it into the ECU, the engine control unit on one end, uh, kind of like the diagnostic port. And then you have a NEMA 2000 connector on the other side, plug it into your navigation network. Um, and voila, you have data. 
Um, the thing to keep in mind with some of these older um, fuel injected engines, they may not have quite as extensive an array of data as a more modern engine would have, uh, but they do have all the basics and they have all the vitals that you'd wanna see. Um, uh, so definitely you can check them out if you have one of those older engines. Um, a lot of Mercruiser, uh, Crusader engines, uh, older Volvos uh, use that. Uh, Ilmore engines uh, often use that. Uh, Mifi, um, Pleasurecraft Marine, which I think is the company that bought out Crusader, uh, they used that system for quite a long time as well. So um, it's a pretty neat piece of hardware. Um, it does have a mobile app that ties in with it as well to set it up. There's Bluetooth on that device. You link in with your phone, kind of do some of the basic configuration and diagnostics. And I think you can also like reset trouble codes and things with it too. Um, so pretty, pretty good uh, uh, options there. Um, but it, what makes these systems all so neat is it really doesn't matter how new or how old your boat is. I mean, you could have a vintage boat. Um, but if there's a place that you could actually wire in an oil pressure sensor and get pulses for a tachometer, um, you can put it into one of these devices and get, you know, 21st century data um, running out of that really, really old engine. Um, it is possible. It's a little bit of a science project. Um, it might take you a couple of weekends to get it all done, but it is really cool. Um, if you're interested in doing this sort of thing, another great resource I will point you to is to panbo.com. Uh, uh, Panbo is a marine electronics blog. It's run was started by Ben Ellison. Um, it has now changed hands, and Ben Stein is the editor for it. And they contribute to a lot of the different boating magazines and boating industry uh, publications. Uh, but electronics is their specialty, and those guys have actually done quite an extensive write up on um, at least two of the three devices on screen here, and a, and a bunch of others as well. Um, that all kind of fall into this category of making older engines talk to new equipment. So there's some, uh, some pretty cool options out there. Um, this is a picture that another Raymarine Live viewer sent in. Um, uh, so he has a Meridian. Uh, it is running Cummins diesels, um, and they are uh, Cummins diesels that did not have any electronic outputs on them. Uh, so he's using that Actisense EMU-1 that is his Axiom display up there on his helm, along with Baby Yoda, uh, keeping watch. And um, you can see he's getting um, a full array of engine data there. We've got RPMs, I see oil pressure, I see water temp. Um, so um, it's a great way to kind of, you know, put breathe some fresh capabilities uh, into an older boat when you're doing an upgrade. Um, and I appreciate him sending these photos along. Um, I mentioned that uh, there are lots of different third party um, providers uh, that um, make this type of hardware. Um, I'll leave this up on screen uh, for the next minute or so, so that uh, you can jot some of these down. Obviously you can watch the replay and check these out as well. Uh, but these are a lot of the resources that I used as I was doing research to build this episode. Uh, I have worked with some of these companies through the years and seen their products in action. They all work pretty well. Um, Actisense, uh, Alba Combi, Digital Yacht, Fox Marine, Maritron, Noland. Um, Oceanic Systems uh, is another one that I don't think I mentioned them in the broadcast. Um, they make tank level sensors. So if you have fuel tanks, if you have black water, gray water, bait wells, whatever, just anything that holds a liquid and you want to know the level in it, um, their, sense, uh, their tank level senders uh, work particularly well with Axiom uh, because they support something called volumetric calibration. Uh, we know that the tanks on a boat often are not symmetrical. Um, they're often shaped like a boat. Uh, so it can be very difficult to measure what percentage of full or empty that tank is uh, with volumetric calibration. It makes that much, much more accurate. So Oceanic is a, a partner that Raymarine has joined with. Um, and there's uh, calibration support for their sensors built right into every Axiom. Uh, Yacht Devices has a lot of great options as well. Um, not only do they have engine adapters, but they have a pretty uh, robust line of um, connectors and wiring harness adapters. Um, so definitely check these guys out if you want to uh, dive into one of these engine projects, particularly for something uh, kind of not standard or a little bit older. Um, some good resources there. Uh, we might have time for a couple more questions before we close the show. I see we're coming up on the end of the hour. What have you got for me, Mr. Producer Man? Volvo Penta diesel sail drives. Uh, great question, Robin. Um, so those Volvo Penta, Penta diesel sail drives 
are probably going to be either J1939 data, or um, there was another protocol that, that Volvo used for a little while in the early 2000s, up to about 2007, 2008. Uh, I think it was called J1907. I may not have that totally correct, uh, but I know Yacht Devices has a adapter um, for that protocol as well. So I might start with them um, as a resource to see what they have. Um, you need to identify for them the exact make and model uh, and year of your sale drive. Um, but almost certainly we can get some information out of it. If it's a newer Volvo Penta sale drive, um, then probably uh, an ECI 100 could get information out of it or the Volvo Penta NEMA 2000 gateway. The Lish. When can we split screen the Yamaha gauge view? That is a great question. Um, so we added that capability just recently on the Mercury side of things. Um, I believe it is on our work list of upcoming stuff for the Yamaha gauge. Um, I'll see if I can get um, an idea of when that might be coming along and I will try to answer it in the comments. Um, but I can certainly understand that that is desirable to be able to see your Yamaha engine data alongside other things. Um, so I'll see if I can get an update on that for you. C3C1L. I have a new Honda outboard connected to Axiom via an NM cable. I don't see everything like you show for Mercury or Yamaha. Do you maybe make a screen for Honda also? Um, so we don't have a specific data page for Honda. Um, although it is something we're very interested in doing. Um, but the Honda engines do put out a pretty wide array of standard NMEA 2000 sentences. Um, if you think you're missing some information, uh, definitely pop a note into our support system. If you could give us the details of your engine, the make, the model, uh, the year, um, and give us just a general rundown of what you're seeing. In fact, if you can take a, a snapshot of your Axiom, let us see what, um, uh, what is displaying. We can do a little bit of research and see what NEMA 2000 PGNs that Honda engine outputs. Um, so uh, it is kind of a combination of what we display on our side plus what Honda outputs on their side. And once those mesh up, um, we should be able to get a pretty robust uh, screen full of data. Uh, but if we can get a little bit of research, get some details on your boat, we can certainly figure that out for you. So either drop it in the comments down below and I will take a look, or you can pop onto raymarine.custhelp.com, open a ticket with a lot of detail, and uh, we can answer it that way. And uh, let's get one more and then we'll close her down for tonight. Keith has twin 8.2 mags with Axios and Smartcraft. I also have a Raymarine Axiom 12. What do I need to display the engine info on the Axiom? Where your boat is a Smartcraft equipped boat, I believe you can do the Smartcraft Connect gateway that we kind of showed at the beginning of the presentation. Um, that works with a pretty wide range of uh, Mercury, Mercruiser, and other Smartcraft capable systems. I know they did some stuff with Cummins as well uh, through the years. Um, so I believe that you can use that. It, uh, those go all the way back to 2004 is what I was reading earlier. Um, so I would talk to your boat dealer about that SmartCraft Connect uh, gateway. And I think that's gonna get you the information that you want to see. All right, I think that is where we're gonna close it down for tonight. We've gone for about a full hour and it is awesome that there are so many questions tonight. And if I did not get to your question live here on the broadcast, uh, don't worry, I will be going through the questions and comments uh, after the show tonight and tomorrow, uh, trying to get answers to everybody. Um, I know there are some folks on here as well who have uh, been down this rabbit hole before and have done engine integration. And if you happen to see a question that you know the answer to, feel free to pop it in there as well. Um, it's certainly super helpful for everybody um, that's on here and, and people who may be researching this down the road. I want to thank you for joining us for Raymarine Live this Thursday night. I hope you enjoyed the show. Again, my homework assignment to you, please share our broadcasts with your family and friends. Let other boaters know about our program. You might find it helpful. And we will see you again soon. Thanks for watching Raymarine Live. Thanks.